Have you ever looked up at those massive power lines stretching across the landscape and wondered why they're made of aluminum and not copper? After all, copper is known as the king of conductivity. It's the go-to metal for wiring in homes and electronics. So why not use it for the biggest, most important wires of all? The ones carrying electricity across entire cities and regions. Well, the answer isn't as simple as you'd think. It's a mix of science, economics, engineering, and a little bit of history. So let's untangle this electrifying mystery and find out why aluminum, not copper, rules the skies. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. Copper is a fantastic conductor. In fact, among non-precious metals, it's second only to silver in terms of electrical conductivity. That means electricity can move through copper wires very easily, with minimal resistance or energy loss. That's why it's the standard in your home's electrical wiring and why it's used in everything from phone chargers to audio cables. Aluminum, on the other hand, isn't quite as conductive. It only offers about 61% of copper's conductivity. But that's not the end of the story. Aluminum has another trick up its sleeve. It's much, much lighter. In fact, aluminum is only about 30% the weight of copper. That's a huge difference when you're talking about cables that stretch for kilometers and have to be suspended in the air. Weight matters in those cases and aluminum's low density gives it a serious advantage. You can use a thicker aluminum cable to match the conductivity of a thinner copper one, and it still ends up weighing less overall. Now let's talk about money because, let's be real, that's often the deciding factor in large-scale infrastructure decisions. Copper is significantly more expensive than aluminum. In fact, Depending on market conditions, copper can cost two to four times more than aluminum per kilogram. So if you're building a power grid that spans hundreds or even thousands of kilometers, those costs add up fast. Aluminum isn't just cheaper to buy, it's also cheaper to transport and install. Lighter cables mean less stress on towers and support structures which reduces the cost of building and maintaining the infrastructure. Imagine the difference between hauling a bunch of solid copper cables up a transmission tower versus more lightweight aluminum ones. For power companies, it's not just about the price tag. It's about logistics, efficiency, and long-term savings. Now you might be wondering, if aluminum is lighter and cheaper, but not as strong, isn't that a safety concern? That's a valid question. On its own, aluminum is indeed softer and weaker than copper. But the aluminum used in power lines isn't pure aluminum. It's actually aluminum reinforced steel, typically referred to as ACSR, Aluminum Conductor Steel Reinforced. In this setup, the outer strands are made of aluminum to carry the electricity, while a steel core runs through the center for added strength. This design allows the cable to combine the conductivity and lightness of aluminum with the tensile strength of steel. That way, it won't sag excessively under its own weight or snap during high winds, ice storms, or heat waves. It's a carefully engineered compromise that works well for high voltage transmission. The widespread use of aluminum in power transmission didn't happen overnight. Before World War II, copper was king, even in long-distance transmission lines. But during and after the war, copper supplies were heavily diverted for use in military equipment and munitions. This shortage forced engineers and manufacturers to look for alternatives, and aluminum quickly proved its worth. Once utilities started using aluminum more broadly, they began to realize all the benefits we've just discussed, lower cost, lighter weight, and sufficient performance. From then on, 
aluminum cemented its place, quite literally, in the sky. Today, aluminum conductors dominate power transmission lines all over the world. It's one of those engineering shifts that stuck because it just made practical sense. So if aluminum is so great, why do we still use copper in our homes? It's a matter of scale and safety. In household wiring, the distances are much shorter, and the risk of fire from overheating or loose connections is much higher. Copper's superior conductivity and resistance to heat make it the safer choice for outlets, switches, and devices that get plugged in and unplugged often. Also, aluminum wiring in homes did see some use during the 1960s and 1970s, especially in the United States. But it led to problems, loose connections, overheating, and even fires. Part of the issue was that the aluminum wire used then wasn't always compatible with copper terminals and screws, and the installation methods weren't adjusted properly. This created points of resistance and heat buildup. After that period, most residential construction returned to copper wiring for safety and reliability. As we look to the future, aluminum will likely continue to dominate large-scale electrical transmission, especially as we build out more renewable energy infrastructure. Solar farms, wind power, and high-voltage direct current HVDC lines all need lightweight, efficient conductors that are cost-effective over long distances. Aluminum fits that role perfectly. In fact, researchers are continually improving aluminum alloys to make them even stronger and more conductive. Newer generations of ACSR and AAAC, all aluminum alloy conductor wires, are being tested and deployed in places where traditional materials would be too heavy or too costly. In a world increasingly dependent on energy, lightweight metals like aluminum are stepping up to help move the current, literally. So, to sum it all up, power lines use aluminum instead of copper, not because it's better at conducting electricity, but because it's the smarter choice overall. It's lighter, cheaper, easier to install, and when reinforced properly, more than strong enough to handle the job. It's a reminder that engineering isn't just about picking the best material on paper, it's about balancing performance, cost, and practicality. And in that balancing act, aluminum comes out on top. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.